Previously on MasterChef Legends, Let's go! the competition kicked off. You are the top 15. Please welcome the legend, Morimoto. The patron saint of pastries, Sherry Yard. I watch you all the time. I just, come on, I'll give you a come hug. On. A very well executed, thoughtful dish. Monkfish cook, perfect. It's delicious. Thank you. You've made this rich and decadent. I would put this on the menu. And the first home cooks were sent packing. I don't think I could even qualify that as a taco. You know what it tastes like? Bitter. Gross. It was just a recipe for disaster. The person leaving the master kitchen is Elise and Naive. Tonight, please welcome the legend of Seven Turn, Michael Mina. The man himself is here. Lift! It's the first mystery box challenge of the season. I want to vomit. <laughs> the stakes are higher than ever. What are we doing, guys? I'm screwed. Let's go! To avoid elimination. I don't understand oh. it. I would be happy walking into any restaurant getting this dish. I'm a little bit in shock. Please place your apron on your desk. Safe journey home. I'm so sorry. Say goodbye. All right. Right. Woo. Welcome back Ooh, to the incredible oh MasterChef God. Legends. Oh, Mr. Rebox. I'm walking into the kitchen, and I see all of these boxes. Light up, everybody. It's our first Mystery Box Challenge. I like a plan, and I like to be organized. I don't like mystery. Let's get going, but I need to clear something up with all of you first. Unfortunately, Mary Jane has fallen ill, and she's no longer able to compete. The good news is, she's going to be OK. She sends her best to all of you. Aww. Aww. Now, this means that there are only 12 of you left, and we are itching closer to the top 10. Tonight, you're going to be facing another elimination challenge, and another one of you will be leaving the competition. Tonight, as you guys can see behind you, we got your first mystery box challenge but we are gonna keep things mysterious just for a second because this is MasterChef Legends and we have another legend to introduce you to. Tonight's legend actually is a chef that has revolutionized fine dining in America. He operates over 40 restaurants worldwide. Not to mention multiple Michelin stars and he's even cooked for not one, not two, but three US presidents. Wow. All of you, please welcome San Francisco's Superman of Surf and Turf, the legendary Michael Mina. Michael Mina, baby. The man himself is here. I appreciate him so much. We have similar beginnings in our life. So good to see you. He's an immigrant just like me. Hello. 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 Hi. Can I just say, first of all, uh, what an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you. First time ever on the set of MasterChef. Thank you for having me. Amazing. Alejandro. Chef. I have never seen you this excited. Come on, shake hands. Come on. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for coming. There you go. Wow. Oh, my God. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Now, I thought I had a lot of restaurants, but how many do you have currently? <laughs> uh, 42 restaurants. That's incredible. <laughs> you put that glamorous twist on those incredible steakhouses. Um, where did it start for you? I think like so many chefs, you know, you're influenced by your family. I did grow up in a Middle Eastern Egyptian household, so food is everywhere. Food's all over the table, you know. I think that's where it all started. Now, since we are joined by the legend behind that incredible bourbon steak empire for your challenge tonight, each of you will be tasked with cooking a unique MasterChef-worthy beef dish. But here's the catch. You won't know what cut you're cooking until you lift your mystery box. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, today, we don't want to see something that we've seen like a thousand times. We're talking beef, guys. There's so many ways you can impress us. Chef Gordon, Chef Michael? Yeah. Maybe this gaggle needs a little inspiration. Chef, you're for it? Come I'm on. ready. Oh, no way. <laughs> yes. Let's do this, dude. Let's do this. Yes. 
both Chef Gordon and Chef Mina are doing a demo for us today, which is insane because people would pay like a lot of money to see this happen. And my mind has gone into hyperdrive and just like soak in all this stuff. <laughs> you ready? Thank you, Chef. Excellent. Now, okay. Chef, tell me what's your dish. I am doing a Wagyu ribeye, mm -hmm. and we're going to do dukkas, a really nice Middle Eastern spice, a uh, little bit of sesame seed and black pepper. Beautiful. So I'm going to use a sweet bread, OK? Oh, yeah. An amazing offal. It's a sweet bread from the pancreas. It's not a throat gland. So a lot more delicious. I'm going to take a leaf out of your book <laughs> as the king and the legend of Serpent Turf. I'm going to do roasted scallops, a little sauterne jus, and with some caramelized carrots as well. Sounds great. Now, cast iron pan, lay away from you inside there like that and get that really nice caramelization. So when you're cooking offal, haven't got that meaty, robust flavor. So you've got to work the herbs, the spices to get that in there. So now, Chef, can I just go ahead and flip the beef and always find the empty spot in your pan. Don't flip it back on the same spot because that's the coldest part of your pan. So important. So now I'm just giving the meat a nice butter base. So the brown butter and the garlic and the herbs is going to give the meat a lot of flavor. Beautiful. Now from there, I'm going to sit that in the oven. Yeah, that fat's going to render in there real nice, and we're just going to let it go low and slow in the oven for a minute. And what temperature do you have your oven? 350. Wonderful. Nice. Lower. Take my sweet bread out. So I've got a little meat sauce that will be the base for the crust for the dukkha, and which will give it the nice spiciness. Love that. So when you come to dress this, imagine the plate. Start to visualize what we're doing in terms of colors. What is so important is the balance in this dish, right? I'm coming off of a high from last week's challenge, dude. Like, I've got a little boost of confidence right now. I've got three things on here, guys. Carrots, scallops, and sweetbread. The only thing I am not hoping for in this mystery box is the sweetbreads. Because being from Omaha, Nebraska, like, give me a piece of meat, I'll do a million and one things with it. But, like, we got Omaha steaks, not Omaha sweetbreads. And there we go. A beautiful caramelized sweetbreads with scallops <laughs> and sauté. Yeah. And that is how two MasterChef legends prepare the most extraordinary beef dishes. Every single demo has been an amazing opportunity to learn techniques and things like that. And I just want to show them, look, I will take whatever piece of information that you have for me, because at the end of the day, I am a student. Now, tonight we've made dishes with an incredible ribeye and one with a sweet bread. Tonight, you'll be cooking beef dishes of your own. We're going to play a little meat roulette. <laughs> You will each have just one hour to cook us a restaurant-quality dish using whatever cut of beef that you find under your mystery box. Wow. Some of these cuts will be familiar, but they're not all easy to work with. OK. Now, please, pick a station. Are you kidding? <laughs> so it's a mystery box. We don't know what we're going to get. I will hate to get, like, a cow's head or something of that nature. I want this one. So we know there's a bunch of different cuts of meat that are going to be under these boxes. I'm hoping that I don't get something I've never cooked with before. Right. On the count of three, lift your boxes. So nervous right now. One, two, three, lift. Oh, yes. Skirt steak. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Hanger steak. Oh, Interesting. I got a flank. I have the ribeye cap. Oh, man, I got a top sirloin. Hey, what we got? Uh, sweet bread. Oh, boy. I want to vomit. I have cheek. I am freaking out right now because I have beef cheek. Not only have I never made it, I've never eaten it. So I have no idea how I'm going to create a beautiful recipe to impress these judges. Now, tonight, use those cuts of beef in a legendary manner out of respect for tonight's legend, Michael Mina. Now, listen closely. Only one of you will win a special prize. You get dinner for two in his Michelin-starred restaurant, Michael Mina, in San Francisco. Yes! Yes! But the home cook who cannot run with the bulls will be eliminated. Right, everybody ready? Yes. 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 Your 60 minutes start. Now, let's go. OK, so polenta, I have milk. Parsley, come on. Sorry. I need one of those spice rubs. Let's see the vinegars back here. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Potatoes. I got the New York strip steak. I have Ooh. never cooked a New York strip steak before. So yeah, a little bit nervous. Roger. 
Panko, Panko! Where's the Panko? Chimes. What else we got here? I was in the bottom three last week with the dessert challenge, so it was a sigh of relief to see it delayed. I think it's the best cut of meat, but it's a lot of pressure cooking a filet mignon for Michael Mina. He's obviously an icon, so my filet has to be absolutely perfect. Whoa! Ah, here we go. I am making a T-bone steak with a really amazing chimichurri. There's high expectations being a Texan to cook a proper steak. If I don't nail the steak, Texas might hate me a little bit, but they're forgiving people. All right, so I am making a teriyaki glazed top sirloin with white rice seasoned with shallots. Then I'm gonna accompany it with uh, some things that'll calm the flavors down and bring them up, and it'll all come together at the end. Okay. I am making an herbed banana squash puree with grilled asparagus um, and a red wine sauce with a pan-seared ribeye cap. Steak is something I'm familiar with, not necessarily this cut, but I'm just gonna treat it like it's any other steak. Medium rare and get a nice sear on it. When I opened up the box and found sweetbreads, I was a little bit worried. I haven't cooked sweetbread before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. There is definitely an added pressure because this is by far the piece of meat that nobody wanted. I thought, hey, why not fry it? Because everything tastes so much better when it's fried. In the previous challenge, I was in the bottom three, so I really need to step up my game. I'm going to try to put my heart out on a plate, and hopefully it doesn't get butchered. Oh, Just under 50 minutes remaining. Now, top 12, an amazing challenge based around Michael's incredible beef empire. One's going home tonight. What's great about this competition is every different cut, you have to cook it differently. You covered with these cuts basically the whole cow. And right. there's certainly ones that are more difficult and ones that are easier. What do you notice first when someone cooks a steak? Well, I mean, obviously, is the meat tempered properly? Mm -hmm. Is the pan hot enough if they're searing have it? Have they seasoned sufficiently? Have they seasoned it sufficiently? How, how are they testing it while they're cooking it? The basics. So this is really entry-level cooking in a lot of ways. Sure. All the simple stuff that adds up. Michael. Yes. Hardest cut out there tonight. I mean, you got to think short ribs. Yep, just absolutely. based on the timing. Yep. I'm making a lemongrass braised short ribs. I'm going to make sure this piece of short ribs goes in a pressure cooker in the next five to 10 minutes because it needs to get tender in the pressure for at least 35 minutes. So today I feel like I'm not competing with other home cooks, but with time. 45 minutes to go. I'm making a braised beef cheek with a creamy polenta. Braised beef cheek takes six hours to make. I'm doing this in 60 minutes, so the pressure is definitely on. I've never made beef cheek in my life. I just know that I gotta get it going. That's the most important part to using a stack pot. If I don't do that, I'm gonna be going home. Matt, what cut did you get? Oh, filet. Filet. Filet is the leanest, the simplest, the cut that everyone in America knows. Yeah, I'm excited about this filet. How are you going to take a filet and distinguish so, it? So I'm actually just going to make a dish I make for my wife all the time. That's good. Stick to what you know. I'm going to try to kick it up a little bit. I'm going to do a porcini vermouth pan sauce, little shallots on top, garlic mashed potato with chives. OK. I'm going to super hard sear, get it nice and golden, then put it in a low oven. No? Not a hard sear. No. You just literally kiss it and really massage and nurture it okay. in the searing process. Okay. It doesn't have any fat. So, so just nice and easy, okay? okay? Yeah. I think a lot is going to hinge, obviously, okay. in the cook of that beautiful filet and how much you respect that product. Yes. I definitely feel like my steak has to be absolutely perfect, because some other people who've had, like, the beef cheeks or, or the sweet breads, they may have a little more room for error. So I need to nail it and make the judges proud. 42 minutes remaining. Now, Lexi, how are you feeling? I'm OK today. And you got New York strip. I know. I didn't make out too bad. Lexi has an amazing family at home. Uh, Tell Chef how much you spend on food a week. About $40, give $40 or take. $40 a week. How, how large is your family? Like? Um, it's me, my husband, and my two kids. How many times have you ever cooked New York strip? None. Amazing. Not once. Not once. That's awesome. That but is I'm super excited great. for the opportunity. Well, what's the dish? I'm going to make a Cabernet jam and put it underneath. Right. And I have some potatoes. So like a, what, what kind of oil are you going to use to stir that meat? I was going to do olive oil. What would you do? You crazy? Yeah, a little yeah. higher smoking point. OK. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. I was in the top three in our last challenge. That lets me know that I actually do deserve to be here. And so 
I'm feeling very confident. At the same time, I'm just kind of nervous, wanting to make sure that the steak is perfect. Where is the whisk? Why isn't there a whisk? Growing up every Sunday, we'd always go home, hit the grill, cook some steaks, and I'm gonna like do a little twist on our family recipe. So far up until this point, I have only cooked this. I'm here today to prove that I belong in the top 12. Sharp knife, sharp behind. Uh, where am I missing? What am I missing? Chelsea, no. The cut you got. I got skirt um, steak. Got skirt steak. Yeah. Ooh, what do you have that in? Beer and lime juice and a little salt. You don't taste that? You know, I actually beer. have not. <laughs> I what beer? Think. Um, just, you know, to getting some of that kind of carbonation in there, let it kind of like break down oh, a little bit. Also that nice hoppy feel mm -hmm. to it as well. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to also do a uh, salsa roja. Love that. What's the rub on there? That's what I'm dying to know. Ancho chili, a little, yeah, a little coffee. Make sure you get enough spice in it. Yes, yeah. Good Thank luck. you. Skirt steak is not something you see very often in a fine dining restaurant. But I love to experiment with a lot of different flavor profiles, and that's really how I came up with the idea to use the Mexican flavors. I'm here to try new things, and I hope I can pull this off. 35 minutes remaining. Seriously? Ooh. I am making a uh, seasoned ribeye, a butter basin for thyme and garlic. This is the first time I'm cooking any kind of meat in two years. I'm here on Master Chef. I don't have much of a choice, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna impress the judges, and I'm just, just gonna do my thing, make it happen, you know? Alejandro, sir! Come on, Alejandro. You talked me up. You gotta make me proud now. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Right, tell us about the dish. I'm gonna be making a hanger steak. What's the garnish? What are you doing? I'm doing a domino potatoes. A domino potatoes. Yes, They'll sir. fall over? What is it? I cut them up, and then I cut them in the mandolin and sink shit. I just put the them all in the same shape. dominoes. Yes. Have you ever seen the domino potatoes? I have not. I just call it domino potatoes. <laughs> I'm going to go home and tell every chef they got to reword their menu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on? I love yes. sweetbreads. Oh, God, that's a high order. So um, how are you going to cook them? Since I've never really cooked with sweetbread, I thought, hey, why not fry them? Deep fry or pan fry? Deep fry, deep fry. But here's the deal. If you bread that, the outside, the coating's going to cook before the inside cooks. So you have to accelerate that process. You either sear them really quickly, put them in the blanch oven, and blanch. blanch them in milk, and then bread them. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, chef. Man. Almost forgot a season out. Wow, there is a lot going on out there. So Abe is going to deep fry the sweetbread. Let's be honest, nobody wanted the sweetbread. So it's one of the most difficult offals to get right. He was very unsure about how to do it. He told him to poach him in milk. And a just Fire. very lightly in milk, and then bread it to accelerate a little bit of the cooking process. Now, Lexi, she's never cooked a New York strip before. Never, it's never. never. She's doing, like, a red wine jam. Caramelized shallots with red wine or no? Um, no, I didn't see shallots in there. She had some raisins in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, the dish sounds a little bit sort of off piece. Yeah. So Matt has the Cadillac of all cuts. He sure. has the filet. I asked him, how do you want to cook it? He said, with a hard sear. It needs to be just kissed in the pan and nurtured, butter basted. Introduce fat to that. Yeah. 21 minutes remaining. Overcooked this one. All right, check this out. We have Matt. I think he's having issues. At this point, my steak's overcooked. Now I only have 20 minutes left. And now I got to start over. Damn. Not good. Eighteen minutes remaining. I took the play out and I poked it and tempt it, and it was over. So um, I'm not serving that to the judges. So I got to start over. Jeez. Now I have to move quick, because now I only have under 20 minutes left. How are you feeling? Uh, a little behind. So this needs turning. Let it roll around the pan. Yes. Let the yes, pan chef. do the work, searing all that flavor there. A filet has no fat, so needs lots of fat. I'm going to add a little butter and, and baste it. A lot it of butter. Right at, yeah, right nice. at the end. Matt, don't let those potatoes get cold. Yeah, You're making I was working mashed on potatoes. that. Working on that You're, right now with a little hot butter. right at the edge right now. Yep. Love that. Get that Thank smile you. on your face. you got the <laughs> best cut in America tonight, the filet. I know. Thank okay? you, chef. <laughs> You've still got 15 minutes to go, OK? Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Right, how are you feeling? I'm um, good, chef. I've sort of parboiled the sweetbreads in okay. milk, garlic, good. and some thyme. So you're going to dredge these sweetbreads? Yes. Good. It sounds amazing. If you can bring this together, 
in the next 12 okay. minutes. Uh, young man, you could be having Thank dinner you. in Michael's Mess <laughs> in San Francisco. Thank you. Good luck. I don't expect to be in top three because I usually don't cook red meat. So it would be a huge shock for me if I did it like perfect. As long as I'm not in the bottom three, I'm good. Hi there. Hello. So polenta, good. Yes, sir. Creamy polenta, and I'm gonna make you the best braised beef cheeks you've ever had. Two beef cheeks. I have my timer on, so one is gonna be stopped at 35 minutes, and one is gonna be stopped at 40. My suggestion is push that stock pot as far as you can. Okay. It will only get better. Okay. Meaning the more you cook it. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Do you have a sauce done? Um, so I'm making my sauce out of one of these. Oh, another thing. You know, you're putting a huge amount of pressure on yourself because you've got to wait for the last minute to open it for the sake of the beef cheek. But then you got to just discover what's in there and pull a sauce out of it. That's like without a net. I know. Are you ready for that? I, I don't have any choice. You really don't I'm have any choice. Good, Good luck. Stuff. Miles. Yes, chef. That looks incredible. Thank you. What's on top there? It's breadcrumbs. We've got uh, green onions. What do you have in the pan? My morels over here. Morels. Morels are what your parents installed in you, young man. Morels. <laughs> right, good luck. Tell me Thank you, guys. You're good, Alex. You're good. Look how gorgeous it is. Flank steak isn't the most like prestige cut of steak to cook with, but I have a fresh concept, and I think I can really make this flank steak shine. This. It smells, smells good. good over here. It smells great. I did a seared flank with a glaze. That looks good. What's the wrap? What's the shell? What's the, uh, the... shisha? So you have the shisha leaves. Beautiful. Then you, you cut against the grain. You'll have a little piece. You put in a leaf. You have a pickled daikon and a lime pepper dipping sauce. I'll go with it. Lovely. That is delicious, by that the way. That is delicious. I'm glad you guys really, really like it. Mm -hmm. That's the glaze. Yep. Family recipe. OK, young man, eight minutes to go. Get it together. Uh, I'm going to put it in here, then. Yeah. Love the pickled bag. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <sighs> All right. We're down to the last five minutes. Five minutes. Got to stop plating. Got to stop plating. This is where it counts. Focus on that execution. Oh, gosh. Looking down at my stock pot, I am freaking out right now. I'm going to open one and then open the next and figure out how to get it on the plate. But I got no idea how I'm going to create a beautiful plate from beef cheek. So I'm going to make two portions, because it has to be perfect. I don't even know how to do this. Oh, OK. Some incredible dishes, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What really caught your eye? Joseph's yeah. with that shiso beef. Yeah. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, my God. Amazing. Yeah. And she's doing a braised beef cheek. It takes three hours to braise properly. Can you really braise a beef cheek properly in an hour? In a pressure cooker, yes. One plate and, please. Yes, sir. Okay. If you uh, waste time doing two plates. I'm screwed. I promise you okay. now you will not be going to San Francisco for dinner. <sighs> One stunning portion, please. Come on. Two, two minutes. minutes to go. Come on, Matt. I've told Anne twice to stop doing two plates, and she's still dressing two plates. Just in case. I don't understand it right now, Anne. I gotta go. Last minute, guys. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Come on, come on. Keep it going. Right. Whoa. This is where you're thinking of garnishes, Ooh. tools of refinement. 30 seconds remain. Let's go. Come on. Man. Come on, Abe. Come on, Matt. The Rolls Royce of cuts. Ah. Prove it. Oh, Ten. Ten. Nine. Nine. Eight. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop! Well done! Wow! That's not cooked, so... You don't think so? No, this one's way over. That one's way under. I feel like I have a good chance of being in top three. I definitely know for sure I'm not going home on this dish. Wow, I love that glaze, bro. Thanks, man. Forgot the damn green onions. I should have paid less, more attention to just plating one. And I, because I plated two, this is not, I mean, it's not a beautiful, it doesn't look as pretty as it's going to taste. All of you, well done. Not an easy task. Now I'd like to take a much deeper look at everything you've done. Gentlemen, shall we? Yes, yes. Indeed. Joseph, I see that there's certain sparseness to your presentation. I just wanted to have everything on this plate matter. 
Abe, so you got an interesting lot with the sweetbreads. Yes, sir. You happy with the dish? Um, I am. I'm quite surprised how the sweetbread turned out. Thank you. How do you feel that your dish came I, out? I feel really good. I feel like I executed the T-bone well. When the judges come through and critique each component, I find that invaluable. Your crust had a lot of flavor. Yes, chef. But it's also really intense watching the critiques of the other competitors. Did you slice that rib cap and taste it? I did not. It's stressful to see when someone messes up. First time ever cooking a New York strip? Yes. Did you get a chance to taste it? I did, yeah. How come the potatoes aren't brown? There's like 10 minutes left, and I put it all the way up to broil, but they didn't get the right you should the have put them in a pan. I love skirt steak, so you went a little Mexican route. I did. It's very hard to make that thing look delicious, but it's all of the flavor, right? Yes. Fingers crossed. It's a season of legends, and we have Michael Mina here, who is a meat legend, so the nerves are definitely real. You had the uh, short, short rib. Yes. Do you feel that you actually got to braise the meat in the time you had? Yes, Jack. Okay. How did you feel it went? I'm a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got thrown a softball here and I missed. Michael, you had the ribeye. Yes, I did. All right. How did we do? I have not cooked meat in over two years. I believe my components came together. You got the, obviously, the beef cheek. How'd it go? Um, I'm super emotional right now. <laughs> oh, gosh. I Don't worry, take your time. I'm so sorry. I hate no, crying. <sighs> hey, <sighs> um, tonight you're dealt a dysfunctional card. To get anything done in 60 minutes is a tall order. Do you think that dish is sending you home tonight? No, I think this dish should send me up front. Good, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, here's the exciting part for me. When yeah. you and I, Chef, did that demo earlier, nobody's copied. Yeah. So yeah. I like that individuality. Some of the more problematic dishes, I think that you can see the regret. <sighs> it's going to be tough. Yeah. Shall we? All right. Excellent. Tonight, we have to say goodbye to one of you. But first, we would like to highlight the top three dishes. Remember, what's at stake? An amazing dinner in Chef Michael's restaurant. The first dish we want to take a much closer look at is from a young individual that has wowed us. This person enters the top three for the first time. Please step forward. Abe. I am ecstatic. I took something that nobody wanted and still made it stand out. Abe, describe the dish, please. Here we have a deep fried sweet bread with a butternut squash puree and a coleslaw with raisins. Let's agree one thing right off the bat. It's definitely resting quality. It looks beautiful. Thank you. Shall we? Why the butternut squash puree? Um, well, I wanted a little bit of sweetness, and I thought it'd be a nice sort of complement with the crunchiness and also just the flavor profile with the uh, sweet bread. I thought it was very good. I like the acidity. I think that did come together nice. Thank you, Chef. The sweetbreads are cooked perfectly. The one thing I don't doesn't fit here is the raisins. Got it. You have enough sweetness from the butternut squash, you don't need it. Thank you. So it's crunchy, sweet. I love the acidity. I think it's good. Thank you, Phil. Hey, the sweetbreads are delicious. Let's be honest, nobody wanted the sweetbreads tonight. And you've made it look easy. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank good you. job. Please. Good, good job, job Abe. Abe. The next dish we want to taste was made by a cook who kept things very simple. Please come forward. Joseph. Woo! Woo! Good job, Joseph. Being in the top three is this surreal feeling. I'm just so happy my twist on our family recipe could elevate this medium cut of meat to the top three. Describe the dish, please. Uh, so this is a flank steak served with shisha leaves and pickled radishes with a salt and pepper lime sauce. It looks elegant. You're a big thinker when it comes to food, and it means a lot, I can see. I'm excited to try it. All right, how should it be cooked? Medium rare, a little bit medium. All right, see what we got. It'll work. It's super bright, super clean, conceptually the kind of dish I love to eat. There's no getting around how perfectly you cooked that steak. The fact that you're able to impart so much flavor in such an abbreviated period of time is really a stroke of genius. Yeah, the sauce that you had in the pan, that was delicious. I just had maybe a touch more of that on the meat. That 
is delicious. Joseph, I think it's one of the best things you've cooked so far in this competition. Good job. Thank you. Thank you all. Well done. Good job, Joseph. Good job, Joseph. Good job, Joseph. Good job, the final dish of the top three and one of the most beautifully presented dishes of the night. Please come forward. Kelsey. I came to MasterChef to challenge myself to step outside of my comfort zone. I thought it was a great time to explore some Mexican flavor profiles, and when I tasted it, I knew that I had nailed it. Can you please describe your dish, Gus? So it's a dry rubbed and seared skirt steak. On the base, there's a salsa roja and some elote-style corn with some avocado crema. Visually, it's beautiful. It's got finesse. It just screams, eat me. You do have a lot of components going on, and to be able to bring them together and make them look like this is great. Thank you. Thank you. You made this dish before, or did you just no, come up with it I, today? No, absolutely not. When I saw skirt steak, you always think, like, simple chimichurris and stuff like that. I wanted to kind of step outside of that realm and try something new. Kelsey, the steak's delicious. Thank I you. mean, it's just melting your mouth. The toast on the corn is just stunning. The only thing I'd change, I would get some charred lime and bang, and just a little touch of salt, and that's it. But it's a really good dish. Thank you. The fact that you were able to season it aggressively and let that cook through, I think is fantastic. It looked great. It tasted better. Really good. Thank you so much. Marinating the meat in the beer and lime. That was so unique, and it really added a nice twist. But great job. I love it. Well done. Thank you. Good job, Thank you. Good job. Good job. Woo! Please, give us a minute. Take it. Three exceptional dishes. Yeah. Abe had the most difficult task tonight. For sure. One thing about Kelsey's dish, I did not expect it to come no. together that no. well. You can't take away from Joseph getting that much flavor in such a short period of time. Yeah. All right. Happy? Yes, sir. Happy. It's a tough one. Abe, Joseph, Kelsey, just one of you will score dinner at the flagship Michael Mina restaurant in San Francisco. Congratulations goes to... Abe, hey, Joseph, Kelsey, just one of you will score dinner at the flagship Michael Mina restaurant in San Francisco. Congratulations goes to... Abe. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> really well done. The good news is that all three of you are safe from tonight's elimination. Please head up to the balcony. Well done. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Amazing. Good job. Oh my god, this is amazing. Bottom three to the top three now, and then winning the challenge. Wow, this is so cool. You three, well done. Amazing. Now, tonight, somebody will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. But first, we have to take a much closer look at the bottom three. The first home cook has previously been in the top three. Tonight was not their night, and they did not handle this cut of beef correctly. Please, step down. And... I'm super nervous right now. Looking down at my dish, I'm worried that it's not going to be enough. And I'm hoping that being how difficult this meat was, that'll help. I could be going home, and that means my dream ends today. Describe the dish, please. I made you a braised beef cheek with a creamy polenta, roasted root vegetables, and beef stock au jus. So visually, you know, it looks uncompleted. I've seen what you've done in this competition, and this thing looks lacklust. Shall we? How long did you braise them for, please, Anne? 45 minutes. And what did you braise so them So I did beef stock, chicken stock, white wine, tons of aromatics, carrots, and onions. And um, unfortunately, tonight, panic set in with five minutes to go. Pressure cooker, it put more pressure on you than it did in the pan. I wish that you had cut the cheeks up that size at the beginning, so they'll cook two thirds earlier. So, Anne, I think the sauce is really nice a good spice to it, and I think that you need it with the fattiness of that meat, but I do agree that this dish needs to come together. 
Yes, Chef. Yeah, this is frustrating because it has all the ingredients for a successful dish. It just needs to be realized better. This is a great example of someone who does not know how to braise. And as we head towards the top 10 of MasterChef legends, we expect you guys to have mastery of some of these basic cooking techniques, braising being one of them. You didn't have the technique. Thank you, Chef. The next dish that we would like to taste comes from a home cook that embraces rustic plating. But they overcomplicated a very simple steak. Please come forward. Let's see. This competition is super intense. Last challenge, I'm in the top. This challenge, I'm in the bottom. So I'm a little nervous because I came here to give a better life to my kids. And so if I go home right now, I won't be able to do that. Please describe your dish. Yeah, I have a New York strip steak with roasted potatoes, sauteed mushrooms and onions, and a carbonated jam. Hey, Lexi, we're getting down to the top 10. That's what's just around the corner. And quite frankly, it doesn't scream a top 10 dish. I'm just hoping it tastes better than it looks. Shall we? Yeah. All right, so how did you want to cook it? it should be a good medium, medium rare. Medium rare, all right. pink. All right. Nice. Got that. Tell me about this jam. What are you calling it? It's a Cabernet jam. So it's a jam made out of wine? Yes. What else is in there? Raisins, cranberries, and some decons pureed together. Uh, the steak was cooked a little overcooked for me, but that's my taste. And don't give me white potatoes, because it's just kind of like, it makes me angry. I have to say, the mushrooms and the sear on the steak are great, but the potatoes are undercooked. Aesthetically, you didn't hit the mark. There are some great flavors here, but it's dry. You need a sauce on this dish. Okay. Potatoes could be way better, sort of bland. Um, it's not that difficult to do a great potato. Thank you. Thank you. The last dish we would like to taste mishandle several elements of the dish. Please come forward. The last dish we would like to taste mishandled several elements of the dish. Please come forward. Matt. I'm definitely nervous. I was in the bottom three last week with the dessert challenge, but I feel like this is my redemption dish. I got a really good cut of meat, and I needed to nail this, so I'm really disappointed in the way I'm going right now. Today, I made a pan-seared filet mignon with a porcini vermouth reduction sauce, roasted Brussels sprouts, and roasted garlic mashed potatoes. Matt, it looks like you struggled. Um, I'm a little bit in shock. Unfortunately, there's a big difference between searing and scorching. How should it be cooked? It should be medium rare. So it's gray on the outside and pink in the middle. Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. So I'm going to say something maybe a little bit harsh. This is a dish you would get in a restaurant with anonymous cooks, where it doesn't really matter what you're eating or who's cooking it for you. I think the promising news is that the onions, they're cooked well. The potatoes have a good consistency. But I agree, this is a perfect example of something that is so misleading, because you see the pink in the inside, and you think, oh, it's cooked all right, but it's actually hammered. Yeah, Matt, when you take something like the filet and potatoes and Brussels sprouts, and you're just really looking for just simple perfection, right? We didn't hit any of the components. Matt, let's make one thing clear to everybody in here. It may be the most expensive cut in the country tonight, but it's also one of the hardest things to get right. The high points for me is that the season's on point. So there is something to salvage from there. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I'm sorry. And Lexi, Matt, please give us a minute. Thank you. Wow. So, Anne, lacked that incredible flavor. All the goodness was in that pan, right? Mm. Lex's garnish on top of that steak was tasty. Yeah, I mean, how do you mess up a potato? With Matt, you have to have that spark, that ambition to do something more. He's not putting it on the you plate. Have to, yeah. Oh, I know. I'm not okay with any of this. Mistakes all around. Yeah. 
shall we? Yeah. And let's see, Matt, the dish that we thought lacked the finesse and the passion to continue in this competition. That dish belongs to Matt. Lexi, and say goodbye to Matt, please. Head back to your stations. Thank you. Matt, you know, when you get presented one of the most delicious cuts anywhere on the planet, that you need to do it justice. You certainly can't overcook it. And that, unfortunately, is why you've cooked for the last time. Please place your apron on your desk. Have a safe journey home. This whole journey has been kind of crazy. I was definitely hoping that there would be a small chance that I would stay, but I just didn't execute uh, what I had in front of me today. I knew it wasn't up to their standards. I have a lot to learn. Hi, man. Hi, man. But I think my kids are going to be incredibly proud of me for making it this far. And I'm just going to keep cooking and, and keep trying to hone my skills and move forward. Now, all of you, top 10 is around the corner. Just 11 of you remaining. We know that you may be all feeling the pressure. But trust me, things are about to reach a boil. Good night. Next time on MasterChef Legends, one of the most influential voices in Italian cuisine. To me, she's family. The legendary Nancy Silverton. <laughs> the most crucial elimination challenge yet. You guys ready to make some fresh pasta? Fired up. To decide which home cooks are worthy of a spot in the top 10. I wouldn't get rid of anything on the plate. It looks stunning. It's not a pasta dish. It's kind of gross. We're down to the last 10 minutes. Sadly, for one of you, you're last inside the MasterChef kitchen. It's MasterChef Legends, not MasterChef Junior. One potato, two potato.